Oh, hello. This is going to be really raw. All right, so if you clicked on this video, then you've probably seen the title. And so because of that, I need to start immediately by laying down a whole bunch of sugar warnings for this video. Sexual assault, sexual abuse, rape, um, violence, self-harm, leftism, rightism, political discourse. I'm not here to have a debate or even a dialogic conversation around Roe v. Wade, around the Supreme Court, about pro-life or pro-choice. This has really nothing to do with any of that. This is really just, I guess, like a, a field notes or log of the feelings that are stirring in my body um, as a result of all the things that I've been reading about and seeing on the news this past week. But maybe we do need to just start with a, just in case you're living under a rock, um, there was a leaked court document from the Supreme Court um, looking to overturn the, um, the decision in Roe v. Wade, which basically made it legal for abortions to exist and left it up to the right of the woman with the baby aka the mother to make that choice or not that's what's been happening in the news this week and there's protests and rallies and people on both sides are going crazy and it's just been a lot of turmoil and i'm not a political person at all um i've really almost it's not a good thing but um gratefully to me like selfishly i've always been an ignorance is bliss person when it comes to politics I've never gotten really into anything, but that's really more been because I've never felt that fire in me. I've never felt, I think, supremely motivated on one topic or another, whether that's um, like the Second Amendment and, and the right to bear arms or it's certain freedom of speech debates. Like I've just never been a political person um, or you could be like, I'm political in the sense that I don't get into any of it. I'm just like, I'm I'm protecting my peace and I think I'm just evolving, maturing, growing up, whatever you want to call it. Um, and now I'm kind of just, this one's really hitting me. <laughs> um, it's hitting me a lot. And this is really new for me. And I just kind of want to talk through what I'm feeling. But I want to talk through what I'm feeling by sharing a very deep and vulnerable story. Which has to do with all the trigger warnings that I first laid out. And that is um, last year on April 25th, I believe it was. Uh, of 2021, I ran a marathon, my first ever marathon, to raise awareness for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, and I had a donation going, and I did all this training for it, and I, I documented not just the running, but the evolution of my mental state and the relationship that I had to my body and my body trauma and um, all of that because I was sexually assaulted when I was 13 years old. Uh, actually, a baby 13. I was three weeks uh, into turning 13, so I was all but 12. Um, yeah, so I ran a marathon to raise awareness for sexual assault, um, to heal their, the relationship that I had with my body, which was so bad, and um, to just to, to be open for the first time. That was the video that I shared publicly with the people who know me personally about inner core Ari and what I do here. Um, a lot of vulnerability is really hard for me, but that was, that was the story or the story as I had laid it out back then. But there's a really big and dark and stormy detail of that story that I never shared because it was really hard for me. Um, it's still hard for me, but it feels relevant now. This is the whole reason why I'm making this video and why all of these feelings are stirring up in me in the first place now. And that is that when I was sexually assaulted, I had a fear that I had become pregnant after that sexual assault. And for months of my life, I woke up every day with this just petrifying amount of fear and 
I was so scared and I, I turned to myself and I turned to bodily harm and I hated my body for having a reaction or a response to this thing that I didn't have control over. It was my way of of retaining control in a really, really painful and violent circumstance. Um, I just didn't have any other options at that point with my brains and and everything going on to do anything but be mad at myself for having a reaction but yeah I was really afraid that I had become pregnant um and it took me a number of months to realize that that was impossible um and a lot of reassurance I think I delayed getting my period for like almost a year because I was so deeply stressed and worried about it that my whole body shut down even more so than it already you know had not it never was working properly up until that point I think that's why this story is getting to me now because it's the first one that like really just cuts right to the the wound and one of the biggest wounds of my life that's um you know on a day-to-day basis it's not a live wire it's not really triggered um you know I've I've since realized that I am sexually attracted to women so I don't really have to run into um even in a health and safety and boundary way um the sh- the challenges of of you know I guess having sex with men, which could, you know, perpetuate um, or re-wound that wound, whether or not the person, you know, meant to. Um, Yeah, so I've just kind of let that sort of be on its way, and I hold space for that wound, and I try to nurture myself all the time. A lot of my body trauma has to do not just with the sexual assault, but the concept of the the fear of that pregnancy and the fact that I started to view my womb and my general stomach area as the supreme target of danger, a perceived threat, something that would just, that I wasn't ready for. Um, so a lot of my wounds don't just have to do with the fact that I was sexually assaulted. They, they very viscerally and specifically have to do with the fact that I was afraid that I, I had gotten pregnant. Um, We're rechilding right now. I know people say like you're reparenting, but I, I I think I need to rechild myself too. Yeah, so this I'm just holding my stomach right now is kind of like a reassurance to my inner child, and I do this very much get the sense that um, even though the inner child is sort of like this this you know cognitive concept, um, I do feel like she lives in my stomach. I mean that's the whole you know, this tattoo, um, I don't think I've actually shown this on camera yet, but that's, um, my inner child escaping the cage of my adult self now and doing the work that I'm doing like I am in this video. I hold space for people no matter which side they're on, because I really do feel like fundamentally we're all cut from the same cloth and we need to show up with kindness and compassion and love for everybody. I have an opinion. They have an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, right? So it's, you I'm not going to die on the hill of whose opinion is right. It's an opinion. It's subjective. But wow, like this is the first time that I'm I'm sharing my opinions on my personal platforms and I'm taking that risk and being vulnerable and being transparent about what I feel like is right and sharing my voice. And that's not something I've ever done in my life. I share my voice here but I share my voice on topics that aren't trigger warning topics and they're not things where, you know, I my health and my safety could be at risk because I'm sharing how I feel and and people are extreme and they think the extreme opposite and they do things on the extreme opposite to extremely opposite people. And it's just incredible to me. It's been really hard. Um but it's been really incredible. It feels like my inner child is really just tugging at my sleeve. And I know that that could be difficult to conceptualize or visualize, but literally think of it like if there was a five-year-old kid walking next to me right now, like in the flesh, and they were just like pulling on my arm sleeve and being like, hey, hey, why are those people over there? Why do they think differently than you? Like, and, and me having that conversation with, that child or you know my inner child and being like well that's the way that they think because that's the that's their opinion and then being like but we were we were really hurt like I have I have thoughts can I share my thoughts and 
this is the first time in my life that I'm like actually really giving my inner child a voice and holding space for her and saying, what do you need to say that you haven't felt like was safe to say before? Or what do you want to tell me that you didn't feel like I would respect or uphold for you when you were younger, when I was younger? And I'm I'm now rechilding and I'm reparenting at the same time and trying to show up for myself in that way. And I'm realizing it now. I'm realizing that this this throat chakra issue of of sharing how I feel and taking that risk and being vulnerable on a subject where it's so gray, right? Like a lot of the traumas that I've experienced, people would say are not subjective. I mean, everything is a construct, but people generally are in agreement with sexual assault and rape is bad. Um, being abused is bad. Growing up in a chaotic child uh, childhood is bad bad for the development of a healthy child like these are things that I've experienced that I've still needed to nurture but the fact that when I talk about them they're definitely people hold space for that very easily almost like across the board like of course that's terrible but this is that gray area now where I'm wading into that political arena and people it's it's a boxing ring you know there's people on left and right and there's people in the middle and there's people who are good on both sides and bad on both sides and I'm walking with her because this is where she's guiding me. And it's hard and it's scary and it's new and it's really terrifying. But I I made that promise to myself um, a few months ago before I got this tattoo to commemorate it and literally put my heart on my sleeve by saying, your voice matters to me, your opinion matters to me, and I'm going to do whatever I possibly can to protect you and to showcase that and put you in the spotlight because I wasn't there for you when you were a kid. I'm going to do that for you now, and I love you, and I promise, and I'm not going to break that promise. And it's been hard. Um, And it's so emotive for me, and it's so emotional for me, and I'm just awakening really powerfully and intensely in my life, with the world, within myself, uh, I feel like I'm just totally blooming and there's a lot of change going on. It almost kind of, it feels like spiritual puberty. Um, a sort of like weird concept to make, but that's sort of how it feels. It's just new and it's just like, look, we're, we're exploding. Like we just, this is happening whether or not we're ready for it. Just do what you can to keep moving forward. <sighs> and it's hard and it's hard but I know that this is what I'm here to do I'm here to reparent myself and to rechild myself and to rewild myself and to heal these wounds and to be a spokesperson and now I'm sort of starting to understand that my whole life I didn't feel like it was safe to be me so I would just do what I needed to to get consensus um, and be in the consensus and stay quiet and stay sheltered and keep my head down low and just get through life and take the straight and narrow and get the good grades and be the good daughter and, and be the good girlfriend and be the perfect everything. Because at least if I'm perfect, I'm not calling attention to myself. And if I'm not calling attention to myself, then I'm safe. But now I feel like I'm at a good enough place in my life, fortunately, mentally healthy enough, physically healthy enough, spiritually healthy enough, and awakened enough to take that vulnerable leap to seek that discomfort and put myself out there into the arena and to show up, not with my arms as in, you know, metaphorical weapons, but, you know, with my arms out and surrender to that and to try to do this for the first time in my life and to speak up. And I'm realizing now Like, I used to be one of those quiet consensus people, and I would watch people come up on their stories and be like, this is ridiculous. Like, not in a way that I was judging necessarily, more out of self-shame, because I didn't feel like I had the strength to showcase my voice and, and to be that person who was so confident in their ability to stand where they were and shout and share that I was just like, ooh, I can't imagine that. Because again, I was thinking from that view of I need to be safe and that's definitely not a safe thing to do. Um, But some risks are definitely worth it in life. And and if this is my only go, I'm ready. I'm ready to kind of, you know, push off. It's kind of like when you're getting ready to get on the ski lift, if you've ever gone skiing before and you're kind of just standing there and 
you know, I was on the, the kitty slopes my whole life and just watching these people go and I was watching people with judgment for a while and then I was watching people with curiosity and now I'm in that arena or I'm approaching that arena and I'm ready to get on the ski lift and I've kind of shuffled over and I'm like, hoo, hoo, okay, okay. There's like this, this vulnerable nervous anticipation, um, but I know that I've got me and I'm coming up on the ski lift now and we'll see where this journey takes us. So it's just been a lot. Um, I'm watching these wounds and I'm watching these patterns and um, I'm seeing how some of my symptoms of that body trauma are coming up at times of day and in circumstances where they ordinarily don't when I do have just a good sense of control and and I'm calm like right now in the middle of the day um, but I'm feeling so much of that stress and anxiety come up and I'm just needing to weather that and hold space and be compassionate towards myself and it's not easy it's a new challenge. It's definitely a new challenge. Um, it's really hard. I definitely feel triggered right now, even though I seem like I have it all kind of put together. And now I'm just breathing and holding space for her to share what she has to say. And it's powerful. It, it's making me realize how many times I needed to say what I needed to say and I wasn't allowed to and how quieted that voice has been my whole life. And Every time that I make that choice to stand up in it and to lean into that discomfort is a realization of all the times in the past that I wasn't capable of doing that or I had chosen to turn my head away and to not do that if I did have the ability to. And that's hard too, but it's all growth. And um, this is what that whole seek discomfort thing is about, right? Right now I'm wearing the daydreamer sweatshirt, but listen we're going to try. I just know that this is the work that I'm meant to be doing here, uh, work in service again for others, but first and foremost for myself and I'm ready. It's hard. Um, but this is what it looks like, right? So yeah. With that being said, I love you. Thank you for holding space with me and for me, um, in this really vulnerable video. Um, thank you for listening and for being here. I do truly love uh, every single one of you who's watching this. And um, I will talk to all of you next week. We'll see where we are then. I don't know. Might go to a protest or something. See what the inner child wants. She's going to get it. So I think she wants to go to a protest. and We're going to figure it out. This is all a practice. There's no right or wrong way. So, bye